This might be the video <laughs> that gets me canceled because um, I'm, I'm just going to be very raw and honest on this topic. Uh, I have a lot of feelings, thoughts, and emotions around this topic. And although I'm speaking specifically today about, about diabetes and a diabe diabetic diet, uh, what's the right diet for someone that's dealing with type 2 diabetes, you know, what I'm going to say applies to a lot of inflammatory and metabolic diseases. So let's get into it. Now, um, we just, my wife and I just a little while ago finished recording uh, the season premiere of season three of Keto Cooking with Love live. We made a delicious crab stuffed salmon, zucchini noodles, and we had one of our mocktails as we're not really drinking alcohol the way we used to. So we made a delicious coconut uh coconut uh coconut mojito a coconut uh, uh, you know a virgin coconut uh mojito if you will so if you haven't seen that episode check it out it's on the channel uh it was a lot of fun and it, it was funny because we started off the episode we, we went live we streamed it live as we always do and our mics weren't on so we're here dancing and talking and having a good time and then we look at the comments of people like we can't hear you there's no sound so maybe I need to maybe I need to add it that just to lighten my mood. But shortly after the episode, my wife and I were sitting on the couch, we're resting, we're relaxing, we you know we clean the kitchen, we put food away, everything is good, and I get a text message right from someone who will remain nameless, but this is a person who who is uh, literally a family member of mine, someone who is very very near and dear to my heart, me and my wife, someone who we love love immensely. And um, we get a text message. I get a text message from this person. And the text message pretty much says, let me look at my, I could paraphrase and I will paraphrase, right? But this is what they wrote to me. They said, hey, love, can you talk about type 2 diabetic meals? They said, yes, I'm a, I'm a type 2 diabetic right now. Uh, you know, I'm not going to mention the specifics of, of their situation, but they 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 were recently dealing with a very, um, you know, traumatic experience in their life. And that uh, situation kind of caused them to go into this down uh, downhill spiral of, of eating unhealthy. Right. Of like, you know, it, indulging in comfort food, which is which is, you know, I've been there. I have definitely been there. This is one of the things that fueled my journey into, you know, to becoming a keto master chef. I mean, I was already a chef, you know, and now I do keto. So I am the keto master chef. But it also one of the things that really fueled me to, to change my life and, and get my health in order. Then they went on to say that they started using um, Trulicity and that their numbers are good, but they're dealing with a lot of quizziness and, and they're almost scared to eat. So, you know, I, I, I was I, at first I said to them, all right, great. You know, thank you for the question. You know, next week's episode, I'm going to dive into that, you know, um, in depth. But then I thought to myself, you know, like this is kind of why we do what we do. You know, uh, our, our goal and uh, you've heard me mention it is to help people improve their health. Right. Like, you know, of course, a lot of times we're motivated by losing weight. Like I was motivated by losing weight and getting healthy. A lot of times people follow us or, or do our programs. You know, many of our students come to us because they want to lose weight, but you know, being, being overweight or being obese is, is not just a physical condition. It is actually the byproduct of being unhealthy. And so sometimes people think like, Oh, if, if, if I lose weight, it'll improve my health, but it's the other way around. If you improve your health, then you'll lose weight. And I know that there's people that are out there that 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 can drink soda and eat candy bars and potato chips all day and they don't gain any weight. They can eat anything. They don't gain any weight. And they confuse that sort of metabolism with the fact that they're healthy. You know, I've often told people, people that can eat anything and still be skinny, that scares me more than someone who who eats like crap and then becomes you know overweight because when you're overweight whether you want to admit it or not right 
you see it's it's easier to notice that something is wrong with your health right but oftentimes people conflate weight and health right and so it, it, it your body's almost doing you a favor when you're overweight i know you may not want to hear that but it's giving you a warning sign right which is hey you you know your health is off but sometimes people are like oh i can eat whatever and i'm still skinny all right cool but it doesn't mean that you're healthy all right and you may know what i'm talking about when i say that i've seen these skinny, healthy people who are 25, 35 years old and all of a sudden drop dead from a heart attack or, or suffer a stroke and we're like, what happened, right? Or or got cardiac arrest, or, right? So, which is the same as a heart attack. Now, let me get into this topic. I want to talk about what's the right sort of diet for someone who is diabetic. Now, full disclosure, before I dove into this transformation of my own life and creating this brand... I too was diabetic. Okay, that was one of the things that fueled me to change my lifestyle. Um, I also dealt with other health ailments that I've talked about on on, on different uh, on different videos. Um, but but for the sake of this video and the sake of brevity, I'm just going to focus on diabetes. Now, just to, just so that we can understand exactly what type two diabetes is. You know, th there's two kinds of diabetes, right? There's type one diabetes. Uh, usually people are born with type 1 diabetes. You don't, you don't usually develop it, but you can. And type 1 diabetes basically means that your pancreas cannot produce insulin, okay? And so when someone is a type 1 diabetic, you know, we have to give them insulin. And the reason why is this. You see, sugar and carbs... Sorry to break your heart if you didn't know this. Carbs are sugar, okay? The same way that ice is water, right? You can't drink ice, but once you put ice in your mouth, it melts, and now it's just water. Carbs are the same way. Carbs may not be sugars, but once you put them in your mouth, they break down, and now they're sugar, okay? So sugar is toxic to the blood. All right. And if if a type one diabetic eats carbs or sugar and we don't give them insulin, they'll be dead in two to three weeks. Why? Because sugar is toxic to your blood and your body. Sugar will kill you in two to three weeks if you don't have insulin. So a type one diabetic is someone whose pancreas cannot produce insulin. And so we have to give them insulin, otherwise they'll be dead in less than a month, all right? I say that, I'm starting off with that because people don't realize how bad sugar is for you. If it wasn't for the fact that your pancreas produces insulin, if you ate sugar, you would just die. You would be dead in a few weeks. Okay, sugar is extremely toxic. So all type 2 diabetes is caused by your diet. All right. So what happens is this. When we consume sugar, sugar goes into our bloodstream. The pancreas freaks out because it knows how dangerous sugar is. So it secretes this hormone named insulin. And insulin goes into your blood, pulls out the sugar and stores it, converts it into fat, and stores it as energy to be burned later. But usually, we never get to burn that excess stored fat, that excess stored energy, because we're always eating, right? And we're usually eating more carbs, okay? Carbs, sugar, right? And so this process gets repeated, this vicious cycle. It's almost like a house catching fire. The firemen get called out because the house is burning. They come out and they put out the fire. But then the house catches fire again. And the firefighters have to come back out. And the house catches fire again. So you can see with that type of vicious cycle, how over time, it's just a matter of time before you don't have a house anymore. I mean, how many times can the same house catch fire 
be put out, get caught on fire again before there's no house no more. This is exactly how it works when we overconsume carbs and sugars. All right. Now, another reason that carbs and sugars affect us so greatly, right? Because for a long time, we didn't have the health epidemic that we have now where 78% of adults are obese. Okay. One in five children are obese. All right. We're living in a time where our, our health is outrageously poor and it wasn't always like this. So, you know, we, we, we now have more sedentary lifestyles where before people were, were working all day, almost most jobs involve physical labor. And even if your job didn't involve physical labor, I mean, there was a time when we didn't have cars, right? We didn't have planes, planes, trains and automobiles. People walked a lot more. People, you know, people had to get water from a well, not just turn on a faucet. People actually had to, you know, farm for food or or grow livestock or or kill a chicken and feather it before they can have dinner. Whereas now you, you just go to the supermarket and, you know, a lot of people don't even realize that food does not grow in supermarkets. So there's a lot of reasons for why our health has so poorly deteriorated. Um, over the last hundred years, but getting back to the diabetes, right? So you consume carbs or sugar, sugar goes into your blood, pancreas releases insulin and gets that sugar out. Now doctors, and I want to be very careful how I say this. Now, first, let me just say this disclaimer, right? I'm not a doctor. Legally, I cannot diagnose any medical condition, nor can I prescribe any form of treatment, okay? Nor would I attempt to do so. However, I do have doctors that I'm partnered with, that I follow, whose information I subscribe to, and I highly, highly encourage you to do the same. So there's a lot of doctors that I follow. I'll just mention a couple, and I encourage you highly to, to, to research them. The number one doctor that I follow is Dr. Ken Berry, and I will put uh, the link to his channel down below so you can check him out. Uh, him and his wife, Nisha, they are carnivore, ketovore, ke you know, uh, keto. Uh, he's a family physician for over 20 years. Uh, he had his epiphany when for years he was an obese doctor and giving people advice on health and realizing that the same advice he was giving people, the same things that he had been taught in medical school, don't work. Right. So he started doing his own research, using his own brain. And now he's one of the leading low carb keto physicians in the country, um, sought after speaker, acclaimed author and has great, great, great content. He also publishes the studies for most of, you know, on most of his videos, he publishes the studies and he encourages you highly to to download this stuff and to work in partnership with your doctor, right? You shouldn't, your relationship with your doctor should not be one where they're just telling you what to do and you're doing it. Okay. And as Ken Berry himself, Dr. Ken Berry himself says, if your doctor is upset that you're doing your own research, that you're downloading studies and you're doing your own reading and coming in and asking questions, if your doctor is upset about that, you should find another doctor. Okay. So Dr. Ken Berry, right? Uh, Dr. Eric Berg, all right? The, both of these gentlemen have thousands of videos, okay? Years and years, thousands of videos on, on all the social media platforms. Um, and, and they have a bunch of, you know, stuff that you want to check out and listen to specifically on these topics. And I'm referring you to them, not because I don't know the information, but if you're in a situation with your health where you are now working under um, or with a doctor, you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't refer you to a doctor who can give you sound medical advice, someone who is licensed to actually talk to you um, from a professional standpoint about your condition and what you can do. That being said, right, I'm not a doctor. I just referred you to two, major, to two amazing doctors. There's also a website. This is the last resource I'm going to give you for now. There's also a website called ketodoctor.com. And uh, you can find uh, not just 
information about keto and and low carb and 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 all types of stuff but you can also find uh, a low carb keto doctor in your area because it's my opinion that if you're working with a doctor and you are diabetic and they're leading you towards the American Diabetes Association or to to some type of drug like Trilicity or whatever, it's my opinion that you need to find another doctor fast. Okay? So let me talk about what type of diet diabetics should be eating. All right? Diabetics should be eating a low-carb ketogenic diet. And the reason for that is this. As I mentioned, when you eat carbs and sugar, it goes into your bloodstream. Carbs and sugar is toxic, and it will kill you in a matter of weeks if your pancreas does not produce insulin. So usually, when you work with a doctor who's not up on his reading and studying, they will tell you, they will misinform you and tell you that diabetes is a progressive condition, that you don't have to stop eating carbs, that in time your body will stop producing insulin, and that you will need insulin. That's all garbage. That's all garbage. Because what causes diabetes is a condition called hyperinsulinemia. Hyperinsulinemia. Insulinemia. What is hyperinsulinemia? Hyperinsulinemia means that you have too much insulin. So you ask yourself, what how do I have too much insulin if I have diabetes? Well, it's like this. I said to you, pancreas produces insulin, goes into your blood cells, and it starts to take out the sugar, right? Stores it as fat, converts it to fat as energy to be used later. But what happens is, this is the best analogy that I can give you. I don't know if you've ever listened to someone talk, maybe like me, right? This person just talks and talks and doesn't shut up. But someone that just talks and 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 does not shut up, if you're not interested in what they have to say, you will get to a point that even though they're talking and you can clearly hear them, you start to tune them out, right? And so now for this person to get your attention, they need to raise the volume of their voice for you to hear them. This is insulin resistance. You have been producing so much insulin that your red blood cells are now becoming resistant to the insulin. They're tired. They're, they're tired of the nonstop insulin, 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 because you wake up in the morning and you have a sugary coffee drink. All right. A, a, a mocha latte, frata, pata, pata, chino. Right. You, we wake up and we have this our, the sad diet, the standard American diet. We have donuts in the morning, bagels, muffin, organic quinoa, oats with skim milk, cereal, carbs, pancakes, French toast, carbs. And so from the time you wake up and you have that first meal, your red blood cells is like, dude, I'm, I'm through with the insulin. I, I don't want to listen to you anymore. And so now what your pancreas has to do to be as effective as it was before to be heard is it has to produce more insulin. That's what insulin, insulin resistance means. It means that your, your blood cells are becoming resistant to the amount of insulin that you're producing, which means that it's getting harder and harder for the insulin to get the sugar out of your blood. And so your pancreas has to produce even more insulin. All right. So your condition that you're dealing with is hyperinsulinemia. And for anyone who's diabetic, chronic kidney disease, high blood pressure, uh, PCOS, plantar fasciitis, arthritis, erectile dysfunction, on and on and on and on. Any inflammatory condition that you're dealing with is a result of hyperinsulinemia. Don't take my word for it. Go, go listen to Dr. Ken Berry. Go listen to Dr. Ken Berg, uh, Eric Berg, 
All right. Look up the 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 the, the car the, the carb addiction doctor. Look up Eva Comp Cummins. Look up Dr. Eric Westerman, and on and on and on. There's plenty of doctors in the keto community who are shouting from the rooftops, but unfortunately, they haven't been able to shout loud enough yet because big pharma and big food got a lot of money. And that's why I said at the beginning of this video, I hope this is not the video that gets me canceled because I'm giving you the truth. So what do you do? How do you eat? If you're a diabetic or you have any of the conditions that I just mentioned, you need to get on a low carb keto diet immediately. I'm going to tell you right now, drugs are not the answer. If you have a doctor who is leading you towards taking some type of drug, you need to find a new doctor. All right. So what is keto? What is low carb? Let me preface by saying this. Every baby that's in a mother's womb, every baby that's in a mother's womb, I don't care what you, what the mother is eating. She could just be eating Doritos and drinking Mountain Dew. Every baby in the mother's womb is in a ketogenic diet. Don't believe me? Go to Dr. Google. The reason for this is that 90% of your body is made up from fat. Every cell in every atom of your body is made up from fat. Your brain is 90% fat. And we've been taught in school and health education, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God, you need carbs. Carbs is the is a, is a body's preferred form of energy. This is not true. Now, it is true that in the presence of carbs and the presence of fat, the body does prefer carbs. But that's not the same as saying that your body needs carbs. We have essential fatty acids, which are fat. We have essential amino acids, which are protein, meaning that you need these or you die. You need fat, you need protein. There are no essential carbohydrates or sugars. The amount of carbs that you need, it's about 7% of your entire caloric intake. The amount of carbs that you need for the brain gets produced in the liver from protein by a process called gluconeogenesis, which means that if you consume zero carbs, the carbs that your body needs, it will produce it from the protein that you consume. Nobody, and I can't say this strongly enough, nobody needs to eat carbs. Period. So, someone that's on a, that's dealing with type 2 diabetes, and like I said, type 2 diabetes is caused by your diet. It's caused by over-consuming high carbs, highly processed foods. You want to be consuming proteins of your choice. So, if you don't eat pork, you don't have to eat pork. If you don't eat fish, you don't have to eat fish. If you don't eat chicken on the bone, you don't have to eat chicken on the bone. But whatever proteins you consume, chicken, fish, shellfish, you know, pork, lamb, beef, eggs, the yolk, everything, you want to be consuming. the Now, if you're someone who's a plant-based enthusiast, there are keto, vegan influencers out there. You might be better served to follow them. I'm not plant-based. I love meat, okay? Pork is my favorite vegetable. So if you're looking at this and you're like, oh, I don't eat meat, yeah, all right, great, great. There's plenty of people that do that. I'm not the one, okay? I'm not the one, all right? Just go Google, go on YouTube, search vegan keto, and you're going to find a bunch of people who do that. I don't do that, all right? I don't do that. And if someone asks me questions about it, I'm just going to refer you to somebody else. All right, because I'm not going to sit here and purport that I know all of these things about a, a lifestyle that I don't subscribe to. OK, I eat meat. Pork is my favorite vegetable. OK, a lot of my clients and students don't eat pork and I still help them. They eat chicken. They eat fish. They eat beef. They eat other things. OK, so you need to be eating the proteins of your choice, animal proteins. OK, you need to be consuming low carb vegetables. All right, so leafy greens, 
spinach, kale, collard greens, turnip greens, mustard greens, low carb vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, asparagus. Okay. And on and on and on. Low carb vegetables. Just Google low carb vegetables. All right. Zucchini. And consuming healthy fats. All right. Most of the fats on the market are processed, refined, treated, chemically treated, extremely unhealthy. So you want to avoid at all costs unhealthy fats. And I'm talking about canola oil, corn oil, vegetable oil, grapeseed oil, soybean oil, peanut oil, safflower oil. You only want to consume keto-friendly healthy fats. So by keto-friendly healthy fats, I'm talking about butter, real butter, not margarine, not parquet, real butter. Um, you know, bacon fat, duck fat, tallow, which is beef fat, extra virgin olive oil, not regular olive oil, not light olive oil that's been tried, treated, processed, refined. It's toxic. Extra virgin, 100% extra virgin olive oil, uh, 100% uh, avocado oil, 100% extra virgin coconut oil, which has a very pronounced coconut flavor. So if you don't want your scrambled eggs tasting like coconut, don't use it. OK, you can use avocado oil. It's a it's a neutral flavor and um, and it has a high smoking point. So that's how I fry my chicken and fish. So. That's it. OK, eliminate processed foods, eliminate anything that has more than three ingredients, eliminate most things that come in a box, can or bag. Eat real food, one ingredient foods. Broccoli is one ingredient. How many things are in broccoli? Just broccoli. How many things are in steak? Just steak. How many things are in chicken breast? Just chicken. One ingredient foods, real foods. Okay? Circle the perimeter of your supermarket. Go around the produce, go to the meat, finish with the dairy, and that's where you're going to find most of your stuff. You only need to go up and down the aisles to get some oil and to get some spices. Okay? Everything that you need is going to be on the perimeter of your supermarket. All right. That's it. That's the easy way to go about that. Only consume these things. Okay. Read the ingredients on everything, even your salt. Okay. Even your salt, you want to read the ingredients on. You're going to find salts that just say salt. Then you're going to find salt that say salt, bicarbonate, ph phosphate, all these different stuff. I don't know what that is. Okay. I don't know. Have you ever had a, a roasted bicarbonate phosphate? Do you know what that is? I don't know what that is. Okay. I took chemistry twice in high school. All right. And I still don't know what it is. So if you don't know what it is, don't eat it. If I told you, close your eyes, I'm going to put something in your mouth. How likely are you to close your eyes and open your mouth? Not likely because people don't put things in their mouth when they don't know what they are. So if you read the ingredients on something and you don't know what it is, why would you put it in your mouth? It makes absolutely no sense. Oh, because the picture on the front. Come on, guys. Let's wake up here. All right. Your health is too important. You're too important. So I know I've said a lot. I know I've gone on a rant, but it's because I feel very, very, very passionate about this because so many of us have been grossly intentionally misinformed by big food and big car and big pharma on how to eat, on what actually is healthy and nutritious. And then we find ourselves in the later stages of our lives, for whatever reason, gravitating to certain foods because they satiate a part of our a part of ourselves that, that we value. And, and I've been down this road. I, I lost 100 pounds in five months, and then I gained back 80 because I was going through an extremely stressful time in my life. And at that time, all I wanted was milkshakes and, 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 and candy and, 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 and fried food. And, and well, not fried foods is good, but but you know, French fries and 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 all this all this crap. Okay, so I understand. I understand what it's like. All right, it's not easy. It's not easy. But I make this video, these videos, in hopes that it reaches someone who who might be going through this. All right. So I ask you guys, please, please, please share this with anyone and everyone. Just share it because I appreciate. My lovely family member who reached out and and was vulnerable enough with their situation, um, you know, to, to say, hey, I'm going through this. What do I do? But I told my wife, I'm going to, you know, I could just answer her, 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 their question. And at first I replied to them saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about this at length in depth next week on our live. And I will talk about it. Maybe not in depth, uh, that in depth. Maybe I'll just, re you know, link this video in the description. 
But I said, I'm going to make this video because, you know, even though they, they were the ones that asked the question, this is something that a lot of people are going through. All right. A lot of people are impacted by. And and, uh, you know, and so because of that. Right. I ask you to please share this. This information I'm sharing today can literally save the life of someone that you care about. All right. Drugs are not the answer. All right. And I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, street drugs. I'm talking about the drugs that your doctor is going to give you 99 percent of the time are not the answer. And if you're fine and if you go to a doctor and he diagnoses you with an ailment and his first move is to get his prescription pad. I will start looking for another doctor. So thank you guys so much for watching, like subscribe, you know, all that YouTube stuff. Um, I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.